This is a production of South Dakota Public Broadcasting. to Love It in Your Living Room. I'm your host, Apollonia Davalos, and I am so excited to be here, especially since Love It in Your Living Room, their mission is to build and bring community together through music. And that is what we're going to do here tonight. So this is an exciting time. But first and foremost, grace and gratitude. A sincere thank you to our 2021 season presenting sponsors, Sanford Health, and Love It In Your Living Room with SDPB sponsors, Dan and Arlene Kirby, for their support in tonight's programming. The Levitt Shell in Sioux Falls is part of a nationwide network of outdoor music venues and concert sites. As coveted anchors of community life, Friends, family, and neighbors of all ages and backgrounds can come together on the Levitt Lawn and just be unified and celebrate life through the power of music at these free live music events. So, on that note, the people responsible for this, we'd like to give a special shout out to Mortimer and Mimi Levitt Foundation. And you can learn more about them at levitt.org. On a fun note, this April, the Levitt is going to release their summer schedule, but you get a sneak peek of one of the 40 amazing artists that will be hitting the lawn this summer. So tonight, it is my honor to introduce Lemon Bucket Orchestra. The Lemon Bucket Orchestra are known for as folk music revolutionaries. For myself, hearing their music, they have such an organic sound, and what people have said about them is just how they celebrate life, celebrate culture, celebrate history. You are definitely getting a wide scope on a global, worldly scale of, of the different dances, languages, sounds. I, I just can't wait for you to meet our the lead vocalist and violinist of this band, Mark Markchik. So without further ado, Mark, hello, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> My God, I think I need to celebrate another coffee if I'm going to get up to your level. To your level. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I happen to have one right here, thanks to being at home. So uh, I'm going to take a sip. Do it. <laughs> For all those watching at home, take a sip with Mark, okay? We're all in this together. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully the rest of like of a lemon bucket will be at home sipping their coffees or whatever it is that they sip because I assure everyone watching at home that you're not coming to see just me. It's not an orchestra of one. <laughs> you know. Although I like I wish that I could play all those instruments at once, but you know. I guess I'm just gonna have to play with other people. No, I miss the guys and girls and we'll, you know. We're, we're really looking forward to getting, getting down to Sioux Falls and, and actually playing live together. Mm -hmm. We can't wait for that energy. So for us to prepare, tell us how, where you are right now and Lemon Bucket Orchestra, a little intro into your origins. Uh, I'm in Toronto, Canada uh, right now and most of the band is is here, although a couple of our members are kind of stuck slash um, be quarantining in other places. Naoki, our trumpet players in Japan, uh, Oscar, our, our drummers in Mexico, um, Julian's out in Ottawa. Um, so we're kind of all over the place right now. Um, how did we start? It's um, you know, usually when we're touring, I tell this story so many times. And now that things have kind of like slowed down, it's I actually have to like try and remember how it was that we actually met. I think like we we started as a as a, a group of four. There were four of us who kind of met and we came back to Toronto after our various travels and 
and we're all kind of missing the same thing in our lives. And that was this kind of, you know, the power of traditional folk music of, you know, anybody who's kind of like played or been a part of song circles or parties or kitchen parties, you know, knows that like when you're in that sort of folk music scene, it's so inclusive, uh, it's so active and welcoming and it's it's just something that we all wanted, we were missing in Toronto and so we, we decided let's just start playing together. A uh, big part of it for us too was playing on the streets, was busking. We all sort of started as buskers and so we said, you know, let's just go out and start playing. Um, you know, surprising people in in the places that they don't expect to hear music maybe. Um, and that sort of like brought us up to um, to really get a sense of, of like being in touch with our audience and not necessarily audience that's like they're already fans but just new people what that is and how we actually connect through music so anyways when we started like i said just playing on the streets we were playing a whole bunch of these songs from eastern europe and one of them is called limonchiki it's a song from from odessa from the the black sea coast of ukraine and in it it's kind of like it's this old like Yiddish, like the way that I would ex, I would explain it. It's like a Yiddish rap battle, kind of. It's two <laughs> old guys that are like going at each other, talking about like, you know, who who makes more money, who's got the baddest lawn, who's whatever. And back in those times, uh, dollar bills were were lemons. That was the slang. You know, so there, so there's a verse where they're like talking about like who grows the most lemons on their balcony, right? And I, I really like that. You know, this thinking of like, thinking of lemons. You know, money as lemons and all. It's it's really interesting. So, anyways, we we used to say that we'd go out onto the streets and we put out our bucket and we work for our lemons. You know. I love that. So with this first song, which is earlier in your career, Bratislava, tell us a little bit about what we're about to see. Okay, so what's weird is uh, about our kind of trajectory as a band is that most bands, they start locally and then they kind of like play around and they might go to a neighboring city when they go to tour. But our first tour was an international tour to Romania and our second tour was like a full on Eastern European tour. And the way that it happened was it was just through friends of friends. Um, we we had a bunch of us had gone the year before to this festival in Romania called the International Romani Arts Festival. And they invited us when they found out that we created this band in Toronto. They were like, you're the you know, this is the kind of energy that we need, how we want to, you know, represent our culture to our people um, and get them excited. You know, there's these kids from Toronto are are into this. You know, they're not playing whatever the modern mainstream music is. They're actually into our traditions. This is what we want to tour around the country. And and we we went and it was nuts. We had no idea what we were getting into. And 13 of us got on a plane, went to Romania, and did 17 shows in 16 days in different cities, just driving through the night, getting up, doing sound check, playing, driving through the night, that kind of a thing. And uh, that led us to be invited back. And on our second tour, we were playing in uh, Vladichinhan, which is in the mountains of Serbia. And, and we went there uh, only because our like our heroes, uh, Boban and Marko Markovic, um, were from that village. And so we went to meet them. We went to seek them out, meet them, play with them. And while we were there, we played with, uh, you know, played for a festival presenter that was going to this conference in Macedonia. We decided to go with him. When we got there, we played and this guy said, you should come to Bratislava. We got in our van and drove to Bratislava that night and played a show. And this video is from that show. 
Oh my gosh, yes. So you're on a journey, ladies and gentlemen. Let's all dive into Bratislava. languages that we're singing in, there's many languages. There's, you know, Macedonian, Serbian, Ukrainian, Russian, uh, uh, Romani, uh, many different uh, languages, and, and we play songs from all over Eastern Europe. Some of us have an Eastern European background, and some of us don't but all of us are really attracted to the energy of the music and there's something in there that we found, you know, we found expression in and it brought us all together uh, and, you know, now we're playing it. So it's a little bit of, of history and just finding the right people and, and the right music, but also just uh, the energy of, of of the Balkans, of the Gypsy people, of, of Jewish people, you know, of Slovak people. We have violins, um, accordion, guitar, flugelhorn, saxophone, sousaphone, tapan, uh, darbuka. We have a dancer, a clarinet, and then we also have at home a few people who didn't come with us: a trombone, a sopilka, another trumpet, another violin, lots of another singer. <laughs> us, uh, why don't you play more original new music? And I mean, all of us play in other bands where we play original music. We have some composers in the band that compose original music, and but 
what the great thing about folk music is, is that it's music that's been around for a very, very long time. And no matter what part of the world you go to, there are people who know it, or a version of it, and you can sing and play. You know, a group of musicians from Canada can come to Slovakia and sing a song and have never met, and they've, you've never heard of us before, but you know the song and you can sing along and it makes you happy. So there's something magical about about rearranging and reimagining traditional music, what it can be like and how it can bring people together across the world. Pre uh, Garage, Mark Marczyk, uh, Lemon Bucket Orchestra. that you bring to an audience and how we can all sing along, just come together. When we're, we're back to just touching one another, joining hands, that synergy, you really do have a gift for that. So into our next video, as we're getting to know and in, being introduced to Lemon Bucket Orchestra, tell us about Goodbye. What do we, what, how shall we celebrate this next piece? Uh, well, I mean, it's a, it's a song about uh, a woman who is pretty much saying like goodbye to her lover and having these like who's he's going away on a ship and she's having these like conflicting emotions you know of like first being really sad and then being really angry and then feeling suicidal and then being really actually gra grateful and it's just this, this sort of whirlwind of emotions that we go through um you know when when we're in love essentially and that's i i really love this song that that marichka um brought us because it kind of speaks to me of like the general the energy of lemon bucket like what's important to us we never had this thing of like okay we only we want to play one type of song or we're going to be this kind of band um like we're gonna be a party band or we're gonna be a world music like theater band or what or a busking band we always we we kind of always felt that our main goal is just to get people to feel anything like whatever it is it's just about feeling whatever your emotion is and and living with that emotion acknowledging it accepting it celebrating it um and it's okay that if it's a bad one, it's okay if it's a good one, whatever, whatever the case may be. So this song, um, it's a live version that uh, the video that you're gonna see. And I, you know, we're not really big on music videos. Those people who like to go and check out Lemon Bucket online, you'll see that we've done like two music videos. This is one of the two of them in our like, 10 plus years of being a band which is ridiculous for for like any band that's as established as ours but we've always the reason that's happened is like we're just i mean we're so into the live we're we're really a live band you know so yes. we decided forget about trying to make this like we made one kind of like artsy narrative video and it was cool, it was a lot of fun, but we decided for our second one that we just we just wanted to bring a whole bunch of cameras into a live show, into our home venue, um, you know, the venue that, that we've sort of played, probably the large venue we've played the most at in Toronto, the, the Opera House, and, and, you know, try and capture it. And that's, so that's what you're gonna watch. So let us all together open our mind, heart, body to this, you know, loving, whew, oh, immersive experience. Let's watch and check it out. Страдания, 
Тоскует сердце ноет грудь Ты уезжаешь, меня бросаешь Так Бог с тобой счастливой путь Ты уезжаешь, меня бросаешь Так Бог с тобой счастливой путь Друзей твоих я не увижу И не увижу я больше тебя Твой голос нежный я не услышу Не долетит он до меня Твой голос нежный я не услышу Не долетит он до меня Я буду верить и грустить Сейчас же еще так и минуты не мерять И так привыкну в разлуке жить Сейчас же еще так и минуты не мерять И так привыкну в разлуке жить Как я натяну бело платья Веду в зеленой загулять Ляну на море, до моря сыне В этом плывет два корабля Ляну на море, до моря сыне В этом плывет два корабля That was beautiful. I'm just like watching that thing again. I'm, I'm, I love that we caught as well as a song, the end of the show, because that's usually, I mean, it's been a tradition of ours to finish that, the, our show in that way with the niggin, which is a, um, um, a Hasidic tradition of singing songs, uh, on Shabbat. And, uh, and we always go into the crowd literally breaking down that barrier so that we can end up with our audience arm in arm singing together and i'm it just makes me happy that we caught that on video um you know at the opera house 
I, I am glad too. It's it's almost allows us for those of us who are going to be present and see you in person. It gives us permission, you know, to participate and to be involved and to know, hey guys, this is an this is an all of us experience. So next, we we are going to dive into folk parade, and this is you know, you're tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, the the folk the winter parade was like, it was. So we basically, every winter, we kind of felt at the end of winter, there's this thing. I mean, when you have crazy seasons like we do in Toronto, you there's this moment where everyone just explodes into the streets with far too little clothing, even though it's still kind of cold. <laughs> and and like, but dude, we're just like excited to get out there and do something. And we wanted to celebrate that. Um, and so we decided to just like to throw a parade and for and it was a really impulsive decision the first time that we did it like which is kind of the thing about lemon buckets so we don't often have time to like apply for funding or like go get the street permits so we just go on our social media and we're like hey everybody meet in the no frills parking lot at this time and uh, we're gonna go on a parade. And then we you know, got our friends from the local, uh, from Samba Alegua to go down the street and do the same thing to all of their Facebook friends, right? And so we had these two parades that started in different parking lots, but that at you know, a time, a predetermined time, bust out onto the street, take over, and then went to a third location where uh, we had a surprise guest and this is kind of cool that like just again it's what you get to do when you're when you're just flying by the seat of your pants we t by fluke found out that the Reykjavik workers union band had flown in from Iceland on a tour and they were staying at a hotel down the street where one of our members lived so we literally went to the hotel staked out sat in the lobby wait till we saw a guy in a band uniform went up to him and said hey we're ex you know we're lemon bucket and like you probably don't know us but i know you guys are here and and like we do you want to play in front of like a thousand people in this park and uh and like just all you got to do is go there at three o'clock and wait and they said yes and we brought them a carnival oh my gosh awesome let's go into folk parade <laughs> Welcome everybody to the Fresco parking lot for Folk the Winter Parade Surprise. We got lots of surprises for you. Of course, we're called the Lemon Bucket Orchestra, and we're gonna lead your uh, we're gonna lead this parade today. Uh, the schedule for this evening. Uh, we're all starting right now at 7 o'clock. We're gonna get, start you off with a half an hour of uh, folk and Klezmer Gypsy Party Fun Super <laughs>
Oh my gosh, I'm so excited that we got to witness the parade. Do follow Lemon Bucket through their social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. You don't want to miss out on any of their updates or experience. Now, we have a special guest, your wife, Marichka. So let's welcome her to our like TV screen stage. <laughs> to our couch. <laughs> Oh, it's nice to be a special guest. <laughs> yeah, special guest in your own home. Welcome, Marichka. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what do you think of what we've done with the place? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about what we're going to get into. We have both of you here. What is this song that you're going to be singing for us? Um. Okay, so... I, I don't want I don't want people to get the wrong idea that we're all chaos and like uh, punk. punk and <laughs> and uh, and celebration, which like we love that, but we're also introspective and thoughtful and, and uh, romantic and romantic sometimes. So uh, <laughs> we want to sing a song that is, uh, more in that vein. Like we we really love old songs, and I'm talking like. Not like, you know, was written in the 60s old, like, like 600 years old, old <laughs> and old, old. Yeah. And this is a song that's um, it's about uh, a woman who's calling back to her years that are running away from her. And uh, she's calling back to them to return and they're running away faster and faster. And so she calls the boys in the village to saddle the horses and to go chasing after after the years and they actually catch them yep but uh but the years when they're caught they say no sorry uh you should have thought about us earlier wow and what is the name of this song i'm gonna let you say it <laughs> because i don't want to butcher its title well i mean if if we're gonna say it in ukrainian it's like he's a hora kamyanoi uh, it's usually like first line this is a name but it doesn't like we're we will we'll rename it i don't know youth let's call, let's call it youth or, or, or like never come back or never come back never that sounds that's more back. that's more dramatic yeah i like dramatic all right well let's let's do yeah let's we give all the we all love drama. the drama, drama. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so exactly. ladies and gentlemen <laughs> introducing <laughs> Is a hore come ya no ye ulube leta yo I mean, how can you not feel something when you're singing? Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's why we sing it in a basement. 
I know. <laughs> so introducing our next piece, uh, Counting Sheep. There's also a story too about how you met. And so let's get a little bit of that. And then what, what Counting Sheep is. Uh, you have the floor. Well, um, I guess for those of for those of you who are new to to Lemon Bucket and to to I guess us to Mark and Marichka, uh, we met I guess not that long ago in 2014. And no, this... if we start to calculate, it's like already seven years ago. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. I guess it is pretty long. <laughs> it feels like it was it was not that long ago. Yeah. But I guess everybody says that who's been um, yeah. uh, <laughs> happily married. <laughs> um, but we we uh, we met in like pretty crazy circumstances. Um, it was the middle of uh, the protests in Kiev that um, were later dubbed the Revolution of Dignity. Um, and we met in sub-zero temperature, literally under burning barricades, while Marichka was singing a, requ wet, uh, a requiem, excuse me, um, for the first uh, boys that were shot and killed at the hands of riot cops um, during those protests. And that kind of, so that, the moment that we met was, was colored by, by that historical moment. And of course things escalated and, and as they escalated, our relationship very quickly uh, evolved from, you know, just having met to deciding we were going to spend the rest of our lives together. I'd say probably in the matter of, of like weeks, maybe. A couple of weeks. Because the, the crazy thing about those kind of circumstances and, you know, anybody who's lived through that kind of thing can attest to. And unfortunately, it's something, you know, we're seeing a lot of in the in the U.S. as well right now. Um, so, you know, we definitely have feel feel very much for for you guys and what you're going through. Um, but one of the crazy things in those scenarios is that everything just gets accelerated. You know, you you tend to um, you tend to answer like skip the small talk and answer all the important questions. So rather than like, oh, what's your favorite kind of cake? There's like we an answered questions of like, okay, if if uh, if there's a burning building in front of you and there's lots of people in it, do you go in or do you run away? Uh, if there are people shooting from, you know, and you need to build a barricade to create something, like to create a, 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 a sort of a safety for the people around you, do you do it or are you scared? Yeah, and you have, you have only like a couple seconds to answer pretty much. And we know the answers to those questions yeah. about each other because of those circumstances. <clears throat> so it was like not too long before we were talking about kids and like, <laughs> and uh, you know, and, and other like more romantic things as well. Yeah, one thing that was incredible about that that's like situation is that eventually what happened is that um, it brought us together also as artists. You know, we we first sort of connected as human beings. It's happened later. Actually. And in our curiosity of just like, did, you know, uncovering and sharing each other's sort of humanity. And then we found out that we could sing together and that we had this sort of like love for traditional Ukrainian music. And ultimately decided, you know, after spending a lot of time volunteering because of course the protest protests evolved into a revolution revolution ended up an annexation annexation went to a war that's still ongoing in eastern ukraine and after volunteering and going through a course to become combat medics we ultimately ended up at the front uh, under a commander who after hearing us sing uh, on you know one of their shifts just said listen you guys carry in your voices the entire history and story both past and present and future of our people don't throw it away you know because of a stray bullet and we thought about that we took yeah, that I was to heart upset, actually, <laughs> but i understand like now and i understand more of he he was super right so moment. 
it was right around, it was at that moment that we decided that we would go to Canada and that we would work on counting sheep which was you know it started off as okay let's just use the traditional music from eastern Ukraine to tell the story of the revolution of what we went through and it as we started doing that we realized we can't just like sing a concert it feels too superficial or too too just um it didn't get to the heart of it it needed to be more experiential and so we later found out that what we created was immersive theater even though we didn't have any theater background or know what we were doing but apparently there's this thing called immersive theater that people really like where you uh you get into it and so we built this show that we sung completely in Ukrainian polyphony, but the audience ate with us, drank with us, built barricades with us, um, you know, celebrated, mourned, you know, all the different parts of what our, how our relationship evolved. We sort of like, we brought people into that and, and the actors, the cast, the music was all uh, the Lemon Bucket Orchestra. It's actually how we met, how I met Lemon, Lemon Bucket. That's right. Yep. That's right. Wow. So we are honored to introduce the theatrical promo video for Counting Sheep. Please watch. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that story and what you went through and how art, you know, through this production, and I hope it comes back and we get to see it one day if you're touring it, I, I want to be the first to know um, just how much art matters. And just by your story, it's almost like this, this gentleman, this general, like saved your life and through that his life and the lives of others can continue to live on through, this, through their story that you've developed and through music. So I just want to thank you for living that, living your values, your, your belief, and through your art, because I can see and I listen how intentional you are through your music. So thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we actually met this guy later uh, in Toronto, and uh, we t we told him that he saved our life. <laughs> and it's why we like. Yeah, and his response was like, "Yeah, I know." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's almost a good story. I'm glad he is alive. He is still, and I and I wondered that, and I'm yes. sure others who are listening to the story are wondering if he's still with us. So, in a, just sharing that, that is a blessing. So. Thank you. He is, his you name, are. his his name, his code name is uh, Bohema, which means Bohemian. 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 So it's a uh, very he's very actor, appropriate. Of <laughs> very appropriate for sure. He's an actor. Yeah. <laughs> but look, it's I mean, he knows as an actor, he knows that like how important the arts are. It's I keep saying this. It's you know even though. We were not deemed essential services by the powers that be um, throughout this whole process. I mean, I think everyone can attest to the fact, even in this pandemic, like how important 
how important art um, has been in various forms. Um, of course, music is the one that's sort of like the most important for us. Yeah. And it's super, it's super crucial in generating empathy more than anything. And it, it's, it allows us to like an access point into the things that we can't understand because it doesn't demand logic. It doesn't demand like understanding or, or some sort of, um, you know, rationality that we may not have matured to yet. It's just an expression of what is at the moment. Um, you know, so we're really lucky that that's something that we've been able to share over the years. Yep. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I'm grateful. I mean, one of the reasons you hear and this attests to it, like the Levitt at the Falls, they're committed to celebrating diversity, bringing artists together from very diverse backgrounds, and just like this, to share your story. So I uh, agree. Thank you, Levitt, for bringing us all together here um, for that today. Well, Mariechka, are you leaving? Okay. Wait, come back. She's I just want to off. say thank you so much. She's sneaking away, ladies and gentlemen. Marichka, you are beautiful. Thank you so very thank much. You. <laughs> Somebody's got to go pick up the kids, right? Yes, <laughs> that's Not right. everyone gets to be a rock star, and uh, that's me today. Marichka is beautiful. <laughs> thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for everything you give through your art. I know that is not easy. So I just want to say to listen to these stories that Lemon Bucket Orchestra are sharing with us. To learn more, to follow them, visit their website, www.lemonbucket.com. Tell us about Lemonade, the next thing we're about to watch. Uh, Lemonade's probably the last like live show that Lemon Bucket did before the pandemic. And it's fitting that it was a charity show. It's something that's been, you know, important to us over the years as to how we can give back to our community. And so we decided, um, it was around Christmas time. It was like the holiday season and we wanted to bring together a whole bunch of artists, um, and, you know, we had these conversations with everyone in our community about how often in the sort of holiday season, um, you know, as a musician, you're asked to, to support a lot of different causes. Uh, and you're not very often asked like, well, what do you want to support? What do you want to support with your art? And we'll give you the platform to support that. So we wanted to do that with Lemon Bucket. Um, you know, plan a festival where we invited some of our favorite bands in the city to to play for what they care about. Um, and this is this song is uh, is recorded there. So awesome, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Lemonade. <laughs>
Mark, thank you. I, I love how, um, I think as artists, we want, to, we want our art to have life beyond ourselves. We want it to mean something. And with the opportunity you provided for yourself and others to be able to give back to the things that truly matter to us. Uh, I think you mentioned earlier, one of the reasons you're with us today, there was, there was some, a grant also that you're <laughs> working on. Do you want to give them a shout out as well for this opportunity? Oh my God, this I, opportunity? I mean, I want to, yeah, I definitely, I mean, we're getting down to the U.S. Um, thanks to um, thanks to the uh, Arts Midwest, first of all. Uh, second of all, um, the Canada Council for the Arts, uh, as well as, I believe, the Ontario Arts Council. Um, you know, so that's, it's really important for us to, to acknowledge them and all the support that they've given us, not only in this tour, but over the years and how great they've been during the pandemic. We're one of the lucky countries that has had like, you know, not, not we haven't had a perfect run, of course, um, but you know, we're really lucky compared to other places in the world in terms of how our government has tried to step up, uh, especially for artists. So we're very grateful. Uh, yes, uh, we're very grateful, <laughs> and thank you, Levitt, <laughs> for continuing to bring us. We can't wait for it to welcome you uh, here in the summer, and uh, that's going to be very exciting. What is something that we haven't talked about today? We already delved so deeply into the heart and soul of your music. What is one parting word you'd like to share with us as we wait in anticipation to welcome you to our city? You know, I I recently had a birthday and uh, and, uh, you know, birthdays are these times when we tend to like reflect more and one of and I, I tried to like boil it down to like three things that I I kind of like have been feeling uh, over the last year or so um, and I kind of boiled it down to um, gratitude, uncertainty and hope. Um, gratitude, you know, I've already sort of expressed and I can express even more. It's not only about um, gratitude for people who give us something or give us opportunities, but gratitude just for just for the ability to get up and experience this amazing thing called life or this challenging thing called life. I think we have to take a second, even when things are really difficult, to really be thankful for the people that are around us, for the world that's around us, um, for for the experience of life. Uncertainty, we've all been feeling that. Everybody in one way or another. And one thing that I remember thinking back to, you know, the circumstances that led to Marichka and I um, meeting is that real beauty and love can come out of uncertainty. Uh, it's really important to remember that our our life our four children, um, you know, our continued expression of empathy and um, and love through art, even throughout in throughout war, I think is a testament to that. And I strongly believe that everybody can come out if you maybe embrace the uncertainty in certain in certain times. And then, of course, hope. And uh, I think all of that shines through through my like you know elaboration on the first two points um so i i want to leave everybody with a lot of hope for um you know for this year for this summer we can't wait to see you awesome i'm so grateful mark thank you Gratitude, uncertainty, and hope, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take that with us. And we want to thank Lemon Bucket for being Lemon, Lemon Bucket Orchestra for being with us today. Do check out their website, www.lemonbucket.com. And then of course, be sure to follow um, Levitt Sioux Falls through our social media as well. So Levitt Shell Sioux Falls through Facebook and Instagram. And learn more about all of our upcoming programming at Levitt. SiouxFalls.org. I just want to thank again our 2021 season presenting sponsor, Sanford Health, and love it in your living room with SDPB sponsors, Dan and Arlene Kirby. We thank you so very much. And of course, Mortimer and Mimi Levitt Foundation. Do check them out again, levitt.org. We appreciate you. We thank you. And remember, everyone, art matters. Art is, is essential. 
and it truly brings all of us together. So do come and join us this summer because it is going to be just a revolution, a new revolution of community, unity, and joy. Again, like Mark said, um, gratitude, uncertainty, and hope. We love you. Mwah! Ha, ha, ha.